Welcome back to another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Salk. Today, we're in Connorsville, Indiana, here at the Pattern Mills Apartments. And I'm joined by Brad Coulter. Brad, thanks for having us here. Glad to be here. So talk to us. This used to be used as a furniture factory. It was. In the late 1870s, this was a furniture factory and now is repurposed as senior living. Um, the Connorsville Furniture Company operated here for quite a few years then um, a local company roots blower had it and had a pattern shop here and uh, it's been used for many things and about five years ago they put about 50 apartments in here and it's a perfect example of an old building being used for something new yeah it's beautiful i know when we came here there were people out here enjoying the courtyard and that kind of thing and how many years has this been standing now um a good 130 130 and then renovated into its current use for how many years uh, about five brad wasn't there a canal right around where we are right now there was looking just east from where we are right now there was a canal this factory was built to use the power from the water of the canal and back to our area just to the north there was a the original water plant set right next to us here you'll be able to see the wall of the original water plant and there used to be a uh, mill race that came back up in here and the water that the people drank was supplied from the canal believe it or not at one time and then there was a little uh, river that ran under this factory and turned a water wheel and all the machines in this factory were powered you can see this pattern mills apartments has about 300 windows and that's that was provided the light during those days and the water wheel turned the machinery Brad, can you expand a little bit more on how the canal was used as the city's water source? In 1869, which is 150 years ago this year, the city utilities was established, and at the time, the canal was the source of water. Um, the old water plant set right here, and it, it drew the water off the top of a little settling pond, and that's what people drank. In about 30 years later, people decided that wasn't such a good source of water, so um, and another water plant was put in that uses wells, and that's the kind of water source we still use today. Still today. Mm -hmm. Is it true that Connorsville and its whole history has only had two city halls? It is true. The original city hall set where the train depot and part of the courthouse is now, and it was built in 1848, and that was used for about 100 year, about 120 years, and uh, then an old Woolworths building at the corner of 5th and Central was turned into a lawyer's office and eventually became our new city hall today. Brad, does city hall, do they harbor anything else in the building? The uh, local chamber of commerce is there, the city police, the clerk treasurer, also our local economic development director. I've heard rumors that Connorsville is, has one of the largest gyms in, in the state. Is that true? It is true. We have the 17th largest gym in the country, which also makes it about the 17th largest gym in Indiana <laughs> because Indiana has most of the largest high school gyms. But we're very proud of it. It was built about 1958. Um, matter of fact, the people for Con from Connorsville all sort of chipped in and built it by buying stock in it. And uh, paid. it was paid off over the next 40 years. It holds about 6,000 people approximately and uh, we've had many regionals and sectionals in that gym and uh, concerts and all types of things it's still used today it's in much better condition today than it ever has been they keep it very nice it had a new uh, floor put in just a couple of years ago yeah i was going to ask if there's any unique features um, about the actual structure itself that differ it is similar to many of the other high school gyms i think a lot of them were built by the same company okay and uh, but um, one of the fun features is that they turn the lights out when the game starts. We turn the lights out and try to psych out all the smaller high school teams that come in, in our with our big crowds. And it it, it doesn't sell out so much anymore, but we feel it a lot. Now this gym has a unique shape. Uh, can you just talk about that? Well, it's a bowl shape. As a matter of fact, our local name for it is the bowl, Spartan Bowl. So. We've had a lot of good players play there. I'll mention a few, and I'll probably forget a few, but Phil Cox, who was Mr. Basketball in Indiana in 1972, and April McDivitt, who was Miss Basketball in the 80s. 
And then we had uh, Jim Crone, who was an all-star, Grant Smith, who was an all-star, Shana Sparks, and so, the ones I'm forgetting. Yes, absolutely. And they all got to play in this big gym. And, and I can only imagine it's a domed out. You said it just the crowds go wild. You know, you, you do that whole psyching out thing. And that's something that, you know, as like a young high school player, they got to enjoy that structure. It's pretty intimidating when you have 5,500 people yelling and the lights go out. And it's a lot of fun. Roberts Park is a beloved place here in Connorsville. Can you talk about that? Sure. In the... In, I think, 1900, Colonel James Roberts donated all the land for Connorsville to use for a park. He had one stipulation, no alcohol in the park. So that has been pro prohibited and continues to be prohibited in our park. Still to this day? Still to this day. A gentleman's agreement, or was that signed on? No, it was very specific in the deed, and okay. it is ironclad. Okay. Um, but there are a lot of nice buildings in the park. We have an amphitheater that has a roof on it. It was originally used for harness racing in particular, but it's been used for rock concerts and different things over the years, many demolition derbies, um, tractor pulls. Um, there's a pavilion in the park that was rebuilt about seven or eight years ago that is used a lot, and it's a very old structure that has been repurposed and reused over the years. Um, we have cattle barns down there that are used a lot. Many different, uh, the swimming pool, many of the buildings were original to WPA in the 1930s. They were built by the FDR program, WPA. And uh, Some people don't know what WPA stands for. Is that works? That project? works, yeah. Okay. Public works projects yes. that were built during the mid 1930s. It, it employed local people to be able to go to work and, and also make nice things for the town. And most of those structures are still standing here in Connorsville. Yeah. yeah that's great yeah we still use most of them today there we used the original pool till about five years ago and uh, we rebuilt a new pool on the same site oh interesting were there just out of curiosity were there any other stipulations that went with that original deed I thought I'd remembered that you know he, he'd also said no one is allowed to pay for anything or an admission it not allowed to charge for admission was there something like that yeah in the original deed it was also the the fair at the park was supposed to be a free fair okay and it continues to be today it doesn't cost you anything to park there or enter or anything so I, I find that fascinating and i think that's very cool that you guys have upheld that brad i absolutely love being in connorsville i think i have found something new every time i've been here but can you talk to us just in the vicinity that we are right now you talk to us about some of the things just right around us and their importance to connorsville well one of the reasons i wanted to have this here was because we're so close to some of the first things in connorsville i already told you the first water plant set sits right near us this this was the first real big factory building also Connorsville is reputed to have the first industrial park in the country and we're sitting in the middle of it it's uh it kind of started out building buggies and furniture yeah and that original and then that eventually turned into building cars okay. and there were numerous cars built here dozens of different automobiles at one time uh, right behind us is a stamp factory that makes gas caps, uh, roots blower that has been in existence close to going on 200 years, um, sits within a stone's throw of us. Just across from these apartments is the McFarland factory, which is now our uh, softball field. But that was the buggy making factory that eventually turned into cars that eventually turned into appliances and many other things that were made here. On a beautiful Saturday, just like today, what's what's one of your favorite things to do here? Well, there's a lot of different things. I'm going to say first, go to the Historic Museum, since I'm president of the Historic Connorsville Incorporated. But right across the street from that is the train. You can ride the train to Metamora or do all kinds of fun excursions mm -hmm. on the train. We have the Whitewater River that you can um, raft or canoe on or inner tube on people there's probably dozens of people on it right now yep. floating down the river um, we have lots of fun things to do here i encourage anybody to come to connersville and i guarantee you'll have a good time
Thank you for watching another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Salk, here today in Connersville, Indiana, at the Pattern Mills Apartments. Great interview with you, Brad Coulter. Thanks again for having us. Thank you. It was nice to be here. And remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and stop, stop often. often. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.